Agent Boone, do you have eyes on the assets? I copy, but they're rising up the charts rapidly. On today's episode, we have the Wolfpack Coachland Security Advisory. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers can join today and get $150 back in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Friday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. As you all know, it's been quite a busy week for us. You see Kenton has a different backdrop behind him. He's been throughout the extremely busy process of moving. I'm sure we all know how that goes. Kenton, how's the new apartment treating you so far? Oh, it's, it's going well, and don't worry. My permanent backup backdrop will not be uh, some barren cupboards, which was much <laughs> like the NC State receiving room last year, but that's neither here nor there. We have loaded that thing up, much like I'm about to load up our uh, new background, and, and everything's going to be A-OK. So the reason for the blazers and the shades, we have a little bit of a fun exercise for you here on Friday. We have constructed a Wolfpack Coachland Security Advisory. Now, if that sounds a little bit like Homeland Security, that is what this exercise is based off of. We have the chart here. It looks exactly like you'd expect it to for a Homeland Security, but this is Coachland Security. We'll be discussing job security amongst our, I guess, our Power 5 coaches here at NC State. No disrespect to some of the other sports. It's just that Sports like women's cross country, there's no need to talk job security because you're winning national titles. Or softball, brand new coach. We know where you yeah. sit on this. If you're at low, you're virtually untouchable. Like you have to do something catastrophic to get up out of it, to, to be gotten up out of the paint, right? Like it just doesn't make sense. Guard it, you're in a good spot. We're watching. We're watching because one of our one of our members on this list started off the season at guarded and has uh skyrocketed up the charts if you will here and this is not the billboard charts you do not want to be number one here uh elevated hey watch yourself watch yourself you in a real show and prove type of moment for yourself okay you're you're on the ledge hi you need to do something right immediately to save your job severe this is weekend at bernie's talk you're done you're already cooked you know the the they you're done. They took you out the oven already. They've ripped you out the plastic because you're not acting brand new. You're just about to be brand new to the unemployment line. So uh, that those are the levels of the the uh, Wolfpack Coach Land Security Advisory. Now, Grayson, can you show us where the first name is? We're going to come out of the gates hot here. Kenton, we're going to kick this thing off with Dave Dorn. Where would you put Dave Dorn on our security advisory? I'm going to say guarded. And granted, this was not always the case, right? There was a point in time last year, after the Duke game, he was between elevated and high. He was right on that line of like, all right, now, brother, you're you're looking to be in a bad way here. You better figure it out and get it together. Because, you know, again, these were struggles. These were legitimate struggles had there. A four and three team that just got thrashed by a team's backup quarterback. You know, you never want to see that, even in a year that many consider to be a rebuilding year to start off. You still never want to see that. And yet that five game winning streak, it, you know, in the words of uh in the words of new addition, he cooled it now. He cooled it on down and got himself back to guard it. Grayson, where do you have him? We do have Coach Dorn placed at guarded, and I think Kenton laid it out pretty much as good as you can. We discussed that loss in Durham from several different microscopes looking at 
different situations on the impact. And now you look at it from a, a view of job security and it was getting a little dicey after you get blown out on the road against Duke using their backup quarterback. And, you know, of course, at that point in the season, we had also made a quarterback switch of our own. There's a lot up in the air and the rest of the season didn't exactly look all that promising from there on out. But what happens after that? NC State goes on a five-game win streak. They get their mojo back. Dave Dorn becomes the all-time winningest coach at NC State. Get a little salty Dave added into the mix to make things a little fun. And, you know, you finish the year at 9-3. and three. You then go into the offseason, and you have an incredible offseason in terms of the transfer portal. The freshman class coming in is electric as well. He has slid back down into guarded, and I think, obviously, his job security is very safe for at least next year. We'll, we'll put it that way. Dave has raised the floor, but he needs a big spike here. If he can get an ACC championship next year, he may move into that low slash untouchable area. Up next, Kenton, we have Wes Moore, women's basketball coach Wes Moore. Where would you have Coach Moore? This one goes without explaining. The man is in low. I think that he could withstand a couple of poor seasons back-to-back before fans are like, oh, what's going on here? Well, what, what, what's this about, right? He has risen this program up. I want people to realize this, right? NC State just came back. NC State women's basketball just came back from a top 25 road domination in conference without one of your starters. And people are saying, well, we kind of struggled offensively at times about a team that was picked to finish eighth in the conference to start the year. That's how good Westmore is. That's the Westmore difference, ladies and gentlemen. No other team, if we were picked to finish eighth in the conference and we're top 10 in the country, are we looking at them saying, well, Dave won the game, but, well, Coach Keats won the game, but we just looked a little stagnant on offense. So definitely in the untouchable area for me. Undoubtedly, he is probably the lowest of maybe all the coaches that we'll mention here. You have three ACC championships at NC State, and we're going to talk about this women's win on the road at Notre Dame in just a second, but wins like that one that Wes Moore stacks on his resume seemingly every year is just another reason he is as safe as safe gets here. He is quickly becoming one of the most coveted NC State coaches in a very long time across all sports. And so Westmore, of course, is very low on this list. Up next, we have the wrestling coach, Pat Papalizio. Where do you have him here, Kenton? Well, much like Coach Pop in San Antonio, the man has revolutionized what wrestling looks like in the Southeast altogether, not just at NC State. He is the guy. He is wrestling in this region. And despite what um, the the head coach from that school of Dirty Foots that we uh, beat up on and were up 33-6 to six on at one point in time, uh, Wolfpack wrestling fans are, in fact, just Wolfpack fans. Okay? They're, they're not bandwagon, fan, bandwagon fans, but – Coach Pop has been so successful. I have never in my life heard of a bandwagon wrestling fan, but now we got to beat those accusations because of how successful he is. Put him in the low and let's keep it rolling. I think that's maybe like the best compliment you could receive is if your program is being accused of having bandwagon fans at NC State, you're obviously doing something extremely right. And he's had several individual national champions with wrestling. He has seemingly a top 10 program every single year, constantly in the mix for ACC titles as well. Another one just about as safe as safe gets here at NC State. Up next, and maybe the one that everyone's waiting to hear about, Coach Keats, Kenton. Where do you have Coach Keats at this point in time? I know everyone wants us to say severe. (laughs) I know everybody wants us to say, hey, he's already done. We just don't know it yet. Stick a fork in him. However, he's in high. And let me tell you this. Him being in high is why I warned Doran of the, hey, you're not in that green zone, buddy. You're not in that green zone. Because remember in the offseason when Wolfpack basketball and their transfer portal pickups were all the rage? Remember when we sat there and and thought to ourselves, hey, man, the coaches are telling us relax because they got some, they're going to cook in the portal. And then we had a party based off of what they did in the portal. And here we are now struggling to buy an ACC win. 
you get into severe when it's too late. Regardless of what you do, you're out of here pretty much. He's not quite there yet. So for that reason, I actually have him placed between high and severe. And I think there is a difference between where folks think he should be and where he might actually be at this point in time. And I think a lot of that dialogue has started to circulate a little bit through social media in that unless like the boosters completely pull out of this thing or there's a complete collapse this last, what, seven, eight games of the season, I think you're going to see Coach Keats in Raleigh again next year. And next year, I, I would say beginning next year, assuming that they don't get into the tournament this year, of course, they still can. There is mm-hmm. still technically time for that. But if they miss the tournament, going into next year, you start on severe, and the only way you come off of that block is if you make it back to the NCAA tournament. That is I, that is how serious the situation has quickly become. I, I disagree. I think that he starts off at this exact spot, no matter what he does this offseason. Like, last year, the offseason was good enough to make people say, you know what, we went to the tournament, we did not win a game, but we went, and we got a great offseason class, we're good here. But the actual play has now elevated him. I don't think next year, even if he gets the best recruiting class, best portal class, goes out and signs eight five-stars out of high school and three more five-stars through the portal, nobody's believing it. Nobody's buying it. Kenton, what have we always said about Coach Keats is, if nothing else, that man's going to go out there and he's going to recruit. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. interesting to see that now, if assuming that he is here next year, he has to pull off probably the greatest recruiting effort that he has done here so far. Because, yeah, his job will be on the line otherwise. And so college basketball is kind of different from the other sports in that you can completely change your program in just a, an off season of messing around in the portal. You bring in seven new guys this year and the pieces just didn't quite work. And so now we have what we have and yeah. you're going to, you're going to have to go do that again. It, it'll look slightly different, but the concept is the same. You're going to have to go out and basically reinvent a team here. And that team will have to get you to the dance or else. No dance, no chance. He's gone. No dance, no chance. I, I believe that's probably the best way you can leave that one. Last one here, fitting because this is Pac-9 opening day, Coach Elliott Avent. Where would you slate him on here? I would say that he's in a green zone for multiple reasons. Number one, he's at that age where it's like we're in the end game now. He's not just on the back nine of his uh, coaching career. I'd, I'd probably say he's on the 17th or 18th hole of this thing. Like it's – it's um, pretty much over here, and, and he's he's done such great things. When he gets baseball coach in NC State history by a good bit, um, you know, he has led this team right there on the precipice so many times, so many times. And, and every time you want to bury coach, he hits you with the spin move, puts you in the blender like he did to those uh, umps that day. Because, you know, he's he's going to find a way to rise back up and produce a, a winning team that's playing some winning baseball. So I say he's definitely in low. It's interesting to see some comments regarding his job security whenever the baseball team loses a game or loses a series. Let me be clear. It's never in question. The only way that he leaves never. is on his own terms because he has absolutely earned that right. He's an NC State legend. He's going to record his 1,000th win more than likely this weekend, and that's something you probably will never see again at NC State. You probably won't see it in many other college baseball either. I mean, he's been here for, I think, 28 years now. That's not going to be something that's common moving forward, and so he has the ultimate say on when he decides to hang him up, and for that reason, he is low. He ain't leaving the cupboard dry either. This year's recruiting class – stellar next year's recruiting class stellar that we're currently sitting in a very good spot with a lot of young promising talent here for the next couple years to play out he's low he's he's very low and he deserves to be in this green category so that was your wolfpack coach land security advisory coming up next we're discussing westmore's women's team who got a massive win on the road at notre dame after a quick word from our sponsors our first sponsor of the day is fan duel For North Carolina, the wait is almost over. 
FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is coming to our state. On March 11th, we'll finally be able to bet on all of our favorite teams in all of our favorite sports. With FanDuel, there's tons of ways for you to get in on the action. You can bet on everything from money line to over-unders to which team will make a little noise in March Madness. And this all comes on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, with live betting, you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket or the next assist or the next rebound and every single one of them after that. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Middle portion of our Friday show, an absolutely dominant win from Westmore's women's basketball team last night up in South Bend, a 59-43 win over the 16th ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And this is coming without Mimi Collins, who suffered a little bit of an injury uh, in last game. However, positive note on this, there is no serious structural damage. She'll miss hopefully minimal time. But to go on the road and put the absolute clamps on Notre Dame is nothing short of incredible. You know, you could talk about the fact that, hey, that's a team led by a freshman in Hannah Hidal going, you should do this to them. But the reality is that's still a very good team, right? Coach Ivy is always going to have her her team ready to go. Maddie Westbelt is nothing to scoff at either. And yet that team, you know, they look like – they just look like they were just completely flustered by the Wolfpack's defensive pressure. And even when there was a miscue defensively, they couldn't take advantage of it. So this was a great game by the Wolfpack, great win on the road. I mean, they got off to that hot start that I talk about all the time that is vital for any team but especially in, when you're playing these really, really good teams, you need to get them out of the rhythm, get them discombobulated, get them flustered, get them trying new things early because then they're abandoning who they are, trying to be somebody new. And that never works out for you, right? When you leave who brought you to the dance, that new person is always going to step on your feet because they don't know the rhythm. And that's, that's, what we're, that's what you want to get teams to do. They held Notre Dame to single digits in the first quarter, and that's what you love to see. Yeah, holding Notre Dame to single digits in their first quarter, like I mentioned, without Mimi Collins, is insane. It's absolutely insane. And then that eff- that effort continued throughout the rest of the night. Notre Dame looked completely out of sorts, and that is full credit to this Wolfpack defense. Hannah Hidalgo, like you mentioned, she's been their best player all year. She's been leading the way, and we had her completely locked up on Thursday evening. You could see the urgency from Hidalgo just kind of hoisting up shots in an effort to get something going and just complete, just, it was a train wreck, to be quite honest, for Notre Dame. You could tell NC State was in their head from the very beginning, and we've talked about with the men's team how these slow starts are ending up killing them. The women's team has been repeatedly getting off to fast starts, and you see the dividends that that pays off. Got off to a really hot start, shot well, took advantage of miscues from Notre Dame, and never look back. So excellent win from the women's team. River Baldwin, we talked about her getting back to 100% health. She certainly looked like it. She put up a double-double. Sanai Rivers put up a double-double. Four of five starters ended up in double figures. Everything seemed to go perfectly right for the women's basketball team. I'll tell you what, if, if River Baldwin ain't 100%, you know, she's looking like a 95-point something. And she looks <laughs> ready and she is rolling. I refer back to a tweet where somebody said any offense you get from River Ball when this season should be counted as an addition. When I'm like, well, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because I have a feeling she has an offensive level that we haven't seen and she continues to show it. She continues to show not only is she a weapon, she can be the weapon offensively. She can be the driving force behind a good offense, not just in terms of, of you know, purely scoring, but also just that gravity, drawing attention, making teams do hard doubles and all that good stuff, getting her fronted in the post, which leads to offensive rebound opportunities. So all in all, she's been phenomenal. Glad to see her looking healthier in back row. As they continue to build their resume here late in the season at this point, and they they keep stacking ranked win after ranked win after ranked win. I believe with this win on Thursday night, They tied South Carolina for most ranked wins uh, of anyone in the country. I believe that number was six. Six ranked wins for this team 
that Kenton often references was picked to finish eighth in the ACC. It's been an incredible coaching effort from Westmore. The women have been absolutely phenomenal on the court. The the cohesion from the, from a relatively new team has been nothing but outstanding to watch. And so when the committee is looking at resumes here in these next couple of weeks, trying to decipher who should be a one seed, NC State continues to really make a strong case. Excellent win on the road. Really can't say enough good things about it. It was very impressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, this is the type of game that you expect out of the number six team in the country. When people ask, oh, they've got, you know, X amount of losses or they've, they've not shown up and they got swept by Virginia Tech, what type of team is that they show you? They show you that the losses are the exception, not the rule. They show you that letting teams back in the game is the exception, not the rule. They show you that, you know, when you are playing this team, regardless of how little our gym is or regardless of if we're coming into your big gym, you're still going to get some work from the Wolfpack women's team. Up next, we're going to close out our Friday show discussing opening day for NC State baseball after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes all of the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. All-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. And you can buy your tickets in seconds with just a number of taps. Game Time has all the deals on all the tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It is the place to find last-minute ticket deals. So if you're in the market for NC State basketball tickets, NC State baseball tickets, NC State women's basketball tickets, anything you need, get on over to Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last couple minutes of our Friday show. It is opening day for NC State baseball. They host the VCU Rams this weekend, or in a three game series to kick off the season. Some of the storylines coming into the season: Coach Elliot Avent is two wins away from career win one thousand just here at NC State, could pick up 1,000 wins in an NC State uniform as soon as Saturday. Certainly hope to see Coach Elliott Avent get his 1,000th win this weekend. That'd be a milestone accomplishment here. We just discussed a couple minutes ago. He's an all-timer at NC State. Across all sports, legendary coach, deserves every bit of the success. Now, some of the other storylines in terms of lineup. Senior pitcher Sam Highfield will get the start on Friday. Primarily came out of the bullpen last year in 23. Fought some injury in 22 and missed the majority of the season. We're hoping the mayor of Apex can return to 2021 form and really set the tone on Friday night. Kenton, what does a healthy Sam Highfield mean for this club in 2024? You know, after losing Willison, the importance of Highfield increases. When you lose a guy like Willison, you need your starters to truly, or you need your stars to truly step up and start. Like, that's just the reality here. And Sam Highfield being a guy that has been the star of the show, that has been the, the you know, the main attraction, the guy that gets the crowd going and whatnot, because he absolutely mows batters down at times. That's going to be really, really big for this team. And again, the amount of pressure that that takes off the team, the amount of pressure that takes off the bullpen, phenomenal, tremendous. And the way that it keeps arms fresh throughout the season, it, it can't be overstated. So a healthy Sam Heifel for this team, if he's successful, will be successful. I don't see a world where he has a great year, but NC State as a whole suffers. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head here. He can really be a driving force. Getting him back completely healthy, we hope, can be a massive piece to this team. Now, getting into some of the starting lineup, I'm going to give you my projections. They are purely projections, but based on the things I've heard, I think I I, maybe I'll get close, but we're going to have to see on Friday afternoon. I have Noah Souls leading off playing right field. Brandon Butterworth hitting in the two-hole playing shortstop. Jacob Cozart behind the dish. He'll hit third. Garrett Pennington is at first base. He'll hit fourth. Eli Serrano mentioned that he is moving to center field this year. He's our new center fielder. 
He will hit fifth. ECU transfer Alec Makarevich will hit sixth. He'll play third base. DH spot, I have Chase Nixon. I think this will fluctuate earlier in the season. You'll see many guys in that spot. A little bit of a platooning type thing, but I have Nixon on opening day hitting seventh as DH. Josh Hogue will be in left field. He is a newcomer transfer. He will hit eighth. And I think you'll see either Matt Hefner or Luke Nixon in the nine spot playing second base. Of course, like I mentioned, just a prediction. We'll see how all of this shapes out. Looking forward to some NC State baseball now getting started here on Friday. VCU Rams, first pitch, 3 p.m. Cannot wait for the Pac-9 season. Absolutely. Can't wait for Elliot Ava to get that win number 1,000. What a milestone. What a coach. What a career. Nobody deserves it more. I'm ready to see. That'll do it for us here on Friday. As we mentioned, a little bit of a weird week for us. We appreciate your patience working through this with us. Thank you for tuning in with us. As always, hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box and hit that subscribe button on your way out the door. We will see you on Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.